So I quite like Fallout, which I think you can gather from this cheeky display of Platinums. And they recently dropped a PS5 version of Fallout 4, and I haven't played Fallout 4 for a couple of years, so I thought, what better time to play Fallout 4 and get the Platinum. However, not only did I want to get the Platinum, I wanted to do it in survival mode, well, as far as you can anyway, because I'd never played survival mode before, but it can't be that hard, right? You only take so much damage and can't save whenever you want. Best case scenario, I just don't die. 110%. <gasps> oh! The first stage of the Platinum was just to play through the main story, doing all the quests, all the factions, until you get to a point where if you do any more quests, some factions will hate you, basically. And I decided to leave the character default, which felt wrong, but probably is right, considering they have the most in-depth backstory out of all the Fallout protagonists. So we sign up to go into a vault, narrowly avoid death by nuclear bomb, and are put into cryo sleep, and we are rudely awakened to witness our wife's death. But none of that matters as we get our first trophy in the game. I then finally got my pit boy, and we were sent out into the wasteland. I then found dog meat, and we went to help Preston in Concord, where we died for the first time. Eventually we reached Preston, and we got the power armor on top of the roof, and Here used it to kill the death claw. Three, two, one, nice. And got a trophy for leveling up to level five. Done with this power armor now though. And I met up with Preston back in Sanctuary and got a trophy. Oh, another trophy. I then did some work around Sanctuary for Sturges, which got me yet another trophy. And then whilst clearing out some raiders for a settlement, I got a trophy for reaching level 10. And when I returned to Preston to tell him the good news, I got another trophy and became the general of the Minutemen. I'll do it. Good. And whilst establishing more settlements, I died multiple times. This is the worst! Eventually I made it back to the settlement in question and got the community organizer trophy for setting up free settlements. I cleared that place out for you. Should be safe for your friends to move in now. Oh nice to have some good news around here for a change. I then took a quick detour to join the railroad. And after around 20 hours of playtime, I finally made it to Diamond City. If this was a non-survival playthrough, I'd be here in like the first couple of hours. And the first thing I did when I arrived was go for a trophy, home run. For this trophy, you just have to run around the bases in Diamond City and you get a home run. I also went and gave myself a beard. It's a thing I like doing in these games. As time goes on, I just give my character an increasingly growing beard. I then watched the case of an attempted fratricide get squashed. He's a Sith! He'll kill us all! And I had an interview with Piper. It was just me and a thousand guinea pigs. They turned carnivorous. And then whilst going for the strength bobblehead, I died multiple times. And what was really good about this one in particular is that my character just kept reloading infinitely. Just watch how this plays out. The whole time he's just trying to reload. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? No, he took like at least an hour and a half worth of attempts. I thought we need to collect all the bubble heads for two trophies. When I went back to Hangman's Alley, I got the trophy Wasteland DIY for crafting 100 items. Or mm, in my case, perfect. cooking them basically. I then decided to kick off some of the Brotherhood of Steel quests by helping Paladin Dance and his team at Cambridge Police Station. After helping them defend the police station, I went on a mission with Paladin Dance to Arc Jet Systems where we found our first simps of the game. Engine firing. 
And once the quest was completed, he gave me a really good legendary weapon which carried me throughout the whole of my playthrough pretty much. So when we finally handed in the quest at Cambridge Police Station, we got a trophy. I didn't even expect that, I was just taking junk out to put in another place. I then decided to do more missions on the railroad like this one, trade craft with Deacon. And upon completion, we netted ourselves yet another trophy. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing such a weird set of gear, I was trying to pass a speech check and I probably didn't even end up passing it. Why, why is it coming off me? I didn't go anywhere near it. And I finally decided it was time to take back the castle for the Minutemen. This was a lot easier than I expected actually, and that's probably because of the power arm I had at my disposal and this missile launcher. Once we cleared out the Mylurks, I set up a radio station and spoke to Preston, which got me the trophy. And Preston did not hesitate to give me another settlement mission. And whilst cooking, I got a level related trophy. Also, I was defending Hangman's Alley from a raider attack, and I thought it was quite funny how Sheffield pulled out a legendary bat from the workshop and smacked this raider across the river. And whilst moving to my next objective, I got a trophy for discovering 100 locations. And then after hours of waiting, Ronnie Shaw finally turned up to the castle, but I already killed all the enemies I had to with her, so it was a pretty quick and easy just walk through. But we were given artillery grenades, which I don't think I used once outside of this tutorial bit for them. And then I found Preston hanging around in this tunnel and got the trophy for the quest. I then went back and got my revenge on Swan, who would contribute to the Harder They Fall trophy. And finally, around 40 hours down the line, I decided it was time to save Nick Valentine from the Trigger Men. So I spoke to Nick, picked up another bobblehead, and convinced Skinny Malone to let us leave. And then I killed him anyway. And then when I met with Nick outside, we got the trophy. We then investigated the house of the man who killed our wife and stole our son's house in Diamond City to look for clues as to where he went. And we had dog meat track his scent. I'm trusting my family's future to a dog. That's it. I'm officially crazy. So we found Kellogg, pumped ourselves full of chems and killed him. And when we left the building, we saw the Brotherhood fly over the Commonwealth. And our next step was to use Kellogg's brain or the synthetic modifications he had to it in the memory den so we could explore his memories and see where Sean is. So we had to go to Good Neighbor where we were immediately hassled by a guard. Language on me? And who are you, huh? Valentine's new dick in training? We're hiring, but I don't think you'd measure up. And the mayor of the town, Hancock, comes and deals with the guard. Anyways, we make our way to the memory den and we enter Kellogg's memories. And we found out that the Institute uses a teleporter to get into the Institute. Yeah. Oh, I'm going in naked. Fingers crossed, I get superpowers. I know you're so we were going to have to go to the Glowing Sea to find a rogue Institute scientist who could help us with schematics for a teleporter to get into the Institute. And whilst I was hearing Good Neighbor, I decided to hire McCready, which got me, uh, which got me the trophy for hiring five companions. Now I decided to ram it to Magnolia, not because I needed to for a trophy, but because I wanted to. And whilst leaving the hotel, I jumped off the balcony with my power armor, which caused damage to some of the NPCs down there, which caused the whole of Good Neighbor to aggro against me and Nick Valentine. So I loaded back a save and had to do the whole Kellogg mission and Memory Den mission all over again, which was obviously really fun. But as I went through Kellogg's mission again, I did get the Print Is Not Dead trophy for reading 20 magazines. And Valentine looked like he just saw a ghost. And do you remember the Pridwin, the Brotherhood airship that flew in earlier? 
Yeah, I decided it was time to go up there and get my own set of Brotherhood Power Armor so I could go into Glow and see Dripped Out. So we met with the Institute scientist Virgil and he told us we had to kill a Corsa before it's chipped to be able to teleport. And Corsas are meant to be really tough to kill, basically like Terminators of the Institute. But of course the toughest part of me wasn't killing the Corsa, it was making my way through the tower for the gunners. So after a couple of attempts, I finally made it to the synth and we killed it pretty quickly. So then we built the teleporter and finally reached the institute. And I met my son, and not this fake one, this one. So then I got myself acquainted with the rest of the Institute for another easy trophy. So then I started to do some missions for the Institute, and I was sent out on a mission where I had to take this companion, who's also a synth courser, and he was getting attacked by the Brotherhood, so it's kind of awkward just standing around, waiting until someone dies. And then during that same quest, I got the trophy for picking 50 locks. And a little bit later, I got the trophy for killing 300 humans, I believe. And then I had a boring meeting with the Institute, and basically, father or my son, whatever, was basically just saying that I'm going to be a successor, which, well, I'm not really, though, am I? Because I'm going to betray them for my main ending. Especially, I know that you'll do the right thing. And then I finally decided I'd go back and do some of the Brotherhood missions, and I literally saw my life flash before my eyes here. So I just went ahead and completed some of the Brotherhood missions, like this one where we take over Fort Strong and help him set up Liberty Prime. Liberty Prime, back online. So now I was at the point where any mission I'd do next would turn another faction hostile, so I had to turn off survival difficulties so I could make a manual save and then do the endings I didn't want to do first, and then go back and do the ending that I did want to do last. So I decided to go through the Brotherhood missions first, and I never killed Paladin Dance before, but I thought, you know what, let's do it. And then I turned in the quest for a trophy. And then I was sent to kill the railroad, which was quite fun. And we had to fight for mass fusion for the beryllium agitator, which helped us to power up Liberty Prime properly. And from there we were on the path to the Institute. And then I confronted my son for the final time. And of course, just for once, I had to do this. Well, you can't just leave me here. I don't want. Please, just think about. You're not Sean. You're not Sean. And then we pressed the big red button. After that I did the Institute ending, which is basically the same, except you fight the Brotherhood. And then we had to hack Liberty Prime to turn on the Brotherhood. And then the Institute ending is over when Sean dies. I think I'd like to sleep now. So the last thing I had to do for some trophies was the Railroad ending, and... Basically, this one was pretty underwhelming. We just do some sort of undercover mission here. And then we had to defend the Railroad HQ from the Brotherhood of Steel. And then subsequently launch an attack of our own on the Brotherhood. If we're keeping them and yourself safe. So now with all the optional endings done, I decided to lock in the Minutemen ending. Because if any ending out of the Brotherhood of Steel and Minutemen are cannon, I'd say it's probably the Minutemen 1, 
And also, you keep every faction alive, except for the Institute, of course. Also, I had this weird glitch happen, because the way I started this ending was by just walking up and killing Father and then leaving the Institute. And when I came back, he was just here. So after blowing up the Institute for the final time, it was time for the final stage of the Platinum, which was just the cleanup stage. So I reached level 50, found half of the bubble heads, crafted 50 weapon mods, hacked 50 terminals, scored a touchdown, collected the final bubble head, reached max affinity with Nick Valentine, completed 50 miscellaneous objectives, Became a benevolent leader, killed my fifth giant creature, and decided to give Preston a little surprise for the last trophy. Take cover. It's 1 p.m. This is Radio Freedom, voice of the Minutemen. Nothing to report. Stay safe out there, everyone. So that was Fallout 4's Platinum Trophy, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you want to see me do Skyrim, then just let me know, but for now, I'm glad to say I finally mustered up the courage to do it, and I'm going to take on the entire Resident Evil mainline series. I'm hacking away at Resident Evil 1 right now, and I can't lie, even Resident Evil 1 is scary, so just stay tuned for that, because it's going to be a lot of fun. And here's a link to some of my other Platinum videos if you're interested in checking them out.